In this episode, I'm going to cover a couple things. Uh, mic setup and uh, alignment uh, for phase alignment. So I got my tracks from Peter Erskine on this particular uh, uh, project. I'm using Manic as an example here. And uh, let's talk a little bit about number of mics. So he used, um, let's see, three, seven, eight mics. So he had one overhead mic that was a stereo mic. And then he had a bunch of mono mics. Uh, he had a, a, a mic on the kick drum, a mic on the snare. He also had a mic on the hi-hat. And then he had four separate mics across his four toms on his tom rack. Uh, so there's eight mics total, seven mono mics and the stereo overhead. This is for his fusion kit. He used a different mic setup for his jazz kit, which was just a four mic setup which I will probably cover in a separate episode. But for the purpose of this kit, it's uh, eight microphones. And, you know, like, so why that many microphones if you haven't recorded drums much? And what do they do? Um, there's a lot of videos out there uh, that kind of talk about this in more detail. But the overhead sort of captures the whole sound of the kit, with the exception of the bass drum. The bass drum's kind of far away, so if you just listen to the overheads, uh, you wouldn't really hear much bass drum at all but it kind of gives you a perspective of what the drum kit sounds like and that's usually when you're mixing that's what you focus on as a starting point you start with the overheads and then you work your way to the other mics the other mics are more specialized and they focus in on each individual element like the kick the snare the hi-hat the toms so as far as getting a sound and things i listen for i listen to the overheads first and then i try and fit in the other individual mics so that I can control and emphasize um, those different things like the snare drum or the hi-hat or the kick. So for instance, on the hi-hat, I might just focus on particular frequencies with the close-up mic that are more about the character of the hi-hat, as an example. Uh, same with the snare and the kick. I'm going to focus on that. And in later episodes, I'll show you uh, how I do that. But that helps me get some of the character, it helps bring out some of those qualities of the whole drum kit, and helps the drum mix overall. Let's just uh, look at the phase alignment thing. So because you got microphones in different places, there's sometimes delays and phasing that happens between the placement of the microphones. So you want to line up certain aspects. So you don't have to line up the entire kit, because as an example, I've got my four microphones across the tom rack. I don't want to try and phase align that. Um, yeah, just it's just a personal choice that I'm making here. You could try it, and the idea is that if something's out of phase, it ends up making the drum kit sound smaller or quieter because the the waveforms are are not. You know, if I'm using a sine wave here like this, if I've got one sine wave going like this and the other going the exact opposite direction, 180 degrees out of phase, you would hear nothing because they they add together and so they'd subtract themselves out into nothing, no sound. Uh, that's if things are perfectly 180 degrees out of alignment. So if things are in phase, then it sort of adds them together and makes um, them work together better. And so a great example is if you feel like your kick and your snare really aren't popping in your mix, it could be a phase issue. Uh, so uh, what am I going to align everything to? I'm going to align everything to the overheads. And I'm using a couple of, of tools here. So let's look inside Pro Tools and, and see kind of how I'm aligning everything. I'm going to focus on aligning everything up to the overheads. That's my central point. That's, that's the source of how the drum kit sounds, and I want everything to line up that way. So the one tool I'm using here is uh, Auto Align, and it's a pretty simple program to use. You load the software in, or the plugin in, and then you just pick a send channel. So the, the overheads are going to be on send channel one. And you can pick however many ones you want. I think there's like up to nine channels that you can use, which is great when you've got like a lot of tracks. But uh, basically everything's going to align up to send channel one. So it's set for send channel. And then you can sort of set a volume that's general thing. And the things that I'm lining up, I'm not going to line up the toms. I'm just going to line up the kick, snare, and the hi-hat. Uh, so what I'm looking at when I look at the signal level, if I play the track, is you can see right here. So like the snare is kind of popping up here, the kick is kind of down at like, I don't know, like minus 30. 
two dB or something like that, and the hi-hat's kind of a little lower. Um, so you can kind of see it triggering here. All right, and, uh, and then I'm gonna be specifically looking for delay and polarity. So I got that toggled. That's the first part. So now if I go to, let's go to the kick. So this is the kick setup. I've just set up things a little differently. So here you can see where the kick is popping, right? And then I've just aligned this up. So how much of the source track, where does the kick really exist as far as dynamics? And you can see it flashing here whenever the kick is coming in, right? And then all I have to do is I just, I hit the detect button and I just run it for a little bit. And it says that it's 60 samples difference, okay? So that's the kick. Then I go to the snare and I do the same thing. So there's the snare. I've got my audio levels. All right, so this is snare. You can see the snare popping. Everything's lining up there. All right, hit my detect button. And there we have it. Our 100 samples is the difference there. All right? And then we go to the hi-hat. We do the exact same thing. There's a hi hat. Right. And I just make sure these are set right. And that's triggering OK. And then I hit my detect button. And there we go. 17 samples. So that's now aligned. So I could just use that tool. And that would be fine. Uh, the old school way is actually looking at the audio files. I'll give an example here. Make this look a little heavier here so I can kind of see my waveforms. So if I zoom in here, you can see here's where the overhead is and here's where the hi-hat is, right? So I'd want to delay that hi-hat you know, by just grabbing it and I'd hit slip, right? And then I would just line this up with this marker here. Um, and notice how the toms are pretty close to in line. Um, so this is hi-hat, this is snare, right? So these two I would slide over. Yeah, I'd look for a good kick thing as far as zooming in, but the old school way is you actually just slide these waveforms around until things sounded better. Um, so that's that's one way of doing it. Um, it's a little hit or miss, not 100% accurate, and even these plugs aren't 100% accurate. I'm just going to move this up a little bit. There we go. So this is specifically because of how much CPU the auto align plugin uses. So if I don't want if I if I don't want to use that much resources. So I could use this tool or I could just use it as a reference point. So for example, the kick is 60 samples, right? So all I need to do is just load in the time adjuster. It comes with Pro Tools, so it's really simple. And then I can just type it in. So I think I had, uh, what did I have, 60, right? So then all I have to do, I had 59 in here earlier, but I can just type 60 and it's done. And then I can disable that auto align. And then I would do the same for snare uh, has a hundred samples so originally I think I had 88 so I just type that in and then make that inactive or just get rid of it so then that's all aligned and then hi-hat all right so we had 17 samples it was off and it could be that that, that number of samples might be so tiny that I really don't need to have the hat Align. So in theory, I could just make that completely left alone. Basically, all I've aligned here is the kick snare. And now when I play the track, it should be a little more phase aligned. Okay, I'll just bypass.
back. So that's aligned. So that's pretty much this first step. And usually I try and do the alignment thing first before I start getting into like all the other stuff like EQ, compression, all that sort of stuff. So that's how I approach the alignment component. In the next episode, we'll talk more about EQ.